You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Hello and welcome to The Real Well Show. I am so excited to introduce you to my guest today because this is someone I have talked about in my book, Retire Rich with Rentals, and I've talked about on so many podcasts, including this one. The person who initially got me into real estate and helped me during a really hard time is here with us finally on The Real Well Show. I don't know why it took so long, but Gary Masseri, welcome to The Real Well Show. It's so fun to have you here. Kathy, I got to tell you, I am very humbled, very honored, and, and, and very amazed at you setting the, the record for everything I know in real estate. So <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. That's, that's really precious to me, too. Oh, my gosh. So let, let's go back to when we met, which was probably around 2004. Yeah, uh, somewhere there. Yeah, somewhere in there, uh, Rich had was just dealing with melanoma. He had right. been told he had six months to live. Thankfully, the doctor was wrong. Uh, but that I, would, I had been a stay-at-home mom. I didn't know anything about real estate. I had been in the broadcast industry, still had a radio show, um, and was trying to figure out how to make money, specifically mm -hmm. passive income. And I thought, well, one way to to get through this very difficult time, first of all, was to rent out just about every room in our house. <laughs> so we had all these people <laughs> living that. in our house, um, yeah. but that helped pay the bills during right. this difficult time. And then my other thought was, I'm going to get a sponsor. Right. And at the time, that was uh, that was the mortgage boom, and every single ad on the radio was about mortgages. Yeah. So I thought, well, those guys got to have some money. So I went down the the phone list, called every single mortgage broker I could. Every single one said no, and I thought, you know what, I got to change my pitch. And I I just closed my eyes. I prayed. I said, tell me what to say. I picked up the phone, and I said, hi. I'm Kathy Fetke. Would you like to be my co-host? And you answered the phone and said, yeah, I was actually thinking about starting a radio show. It and was. that is how we met. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you were so kind. Yeah. You said, come on over to the office. I went over. I told you how much. You wrote the check. And we were we were partners from then on. <laughs> <laughs> Quite uh, a learning experience. I'll tell you, I learned more about real estate from that show. And I did all the courses and classes I've taken. <laughs> Yeah, we had the opportunity. It was a pretty big station in San Francisco. Yeah. We got to interview lots of people. Right. Um, but, you know, you had a passion for opening minds to um, the power of leverage, to the power of investing in real estate. And you opened my mind. And every single show, I would be like, what? You can do this? You can, you, you can fix your credit? You can... Uh, you know, borrow this much money from the bank and then they'll just, you know, at the time, I think it was 100% financing on investment property. You remember? 100%. Yes. Even banks were doing it. Not not hard money people, but banks were loaning 100%. Yeah. yeah. Unlimited. Right. Unlimited. Unlimited. Yeah. Yeah. And you you had a, you know, a big building in um, Danville mm -hmm. with, with lots of mortgage brokers. You owned the mortgage yeah. company. And uh and then one day we were taking Bart to the to the show in San Francisco and oh, you pulled, I don't know if you remember this, but you pulled out three checks from your wallet. Yeah. One was $10,000, one was eleven, dollars one was $12,000. I, I, I think I had made $20,000 an entire year, you know, like because I had been a stay-at-home mom. And you said, I just made this today. And I'm like, really? And, and you said, you know, if you become a mortgage broker and work with me, you could make this too. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I was trying to get you as a mortgage broker. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I got my license and I, I came to your office and worked for you and yeah. changed my life forever. Yeah, you did. You did. I'll tell you what was amazing, though. I mean, you you had this thing about wanting to invest in real estate and create passive residual income. I mean, that that's just you talked about that so much. And what amazed me was, is that in the time you went out and I think you bought all these properties. I'm not mistaken, right? Did yeah, we had. Did, How many did you have? Well, so we had Robert Kiyosaki on the show. Yeah, I remember that. And Kiyosaki, if you recall, was saying, oh, you know, I can't do it in his voice, but he's like, oh, you know, this is going to all blow up. And, uh, you know, these right. high priced markets are going to, you know, a bubble. Just bubble. It bubble. It's a bubble. Yeah. And he's, yeah. so he said he, he was selling everything and buying in Texas. 
And I remember after the show, we yeah. kind of cornered him and said, wait, 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 like where, what, what are you doing? Where are you buying? And yeah. I, I heard it and it made sense. I jumped on a plane. And I, I went to Dallas and I saw what he saw, you know, it was affordable. Uh, there was massive job growth. Mm -hmm. The the agent that took me around was trying to sell me some garbage. So I quickly learned that wasn't the route. And I started meeting with property managers. Yeah. And I, I did come back from that trip with five properties. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You know, it was amazing, Kathy, when the market did turn on 207, 208 in there, you know, we, of course, we lost that company because of that. And a lot of us had to file foreclosures and everything. I mean, it just took us out. But you kept going. That That's what amazed me about you. I mean, you didn't stop. You ran towards it. You saw it. And I don't know what you saw on it because I thought you were crazy. As wait, She just lost all these properties. Why is she going out there trying to buy more properties? So I don't know. You, I've never asked you this, but what made you see that that way? Of course, I didn't. I, I wouldn't touch properties after that. Yeah, um, because the properties in Texas we bought were performing. Uh -huh. And and the properties that um, that I didn't take my own advice on mm -hmm. um, didn't perform. You know, I, I was t teaching people the power of cash flow and making sure you buy properties where the income covers the debt and you're not having an adjustable rate payment you can't make when that adjusts. And yet, <laughs> I, I kept two million dollar properties in California. One was a rental. They were worth about half that by 2009. So we owed, you know, twice as much on them. Uh, I had bought three uh, construction properties, but I, we put them on a balloon note. I don't know why I did that. I meant to do a construction deferment, and didn't read the fine print. I don't know. I was lazy. We were just kind of, it was crazy times. And, and it turns out those, those uh, ballooned, they were uh, short term and if you didn't come up with the money to pay off those construction loans, you lost the property. Oh, wow. And and then we bought um, three, again, Rich just went along for the ride and I pushed it, but three properties in Boise, Idaho that uh, were just too expensive and there wasn't enough of an employer base. So that, that market that got hit really hard. So I saw, I knew why I had failed, but I also knew how I had um you know, one and, and a lot of, you know, our real wealth members, I had steered in the right direction. I didn't have them doing that crazy stuff. They were buying in Texas. They were buying properties that cash flowed in the right markets. And those properties just sailed right through. They didn't have any issues. So even during the worst housing recession in, in our lifetimes, um, our clients did amazing. You know, they, they you sold, the right, you found the right markets. I found the right markets. I gave the right advice. I didn't take my own advice. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. So well, that's why. That's why I wanted to do better. And I, I also saw the opportunity that, you know, the stuff we were buying, you know, just a year earlier was now half the price or a quarter of the price of, of what we were paying, but mm -hmm. the same rents. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, I, I followed you and it, it, it's amazing because I, I wish I would listen to you more because your advice about, out of California, rental properties obviously paid off big for you, you know. And I never took that step. My first time, I I went to Atlanta, Georgia. I bought a property, and I flipped it, and found out the contractor wasn't a contractor, and I lost money on the property. That's how I got my start. But today, I build these four, five, six million dollar homes. And back then, you know, I I should have walked away, but I just re I remember your resilience, and I remember how you charged forward. I honest to God, you inspired me, and I said, you know what, I'm staying with this thing. And sure enough, I became a a really a, a very good quality builder in the Bay Area as a result of that. So I got to thank you too. Well, I'm glad we inspired each other. Yeah, you opened you my mind to this yeah, whole yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you taught me about leverage, the power of leverage. Uh, you, you know, the power of, of cash flow and, and all the different things that your clients were doing, your, your mortgage clients were doing all kinds of really cool things that I had never heard of, you know, but they have names for it now, but back then it was, you know, buy, renovate, refi, get all your money back out, go do it again. Um, you know, live in the property for two years, renovate it, increase the value and then you get up to $500,000 tax free, right. you know, right, these types right. of things. Crazy and stuff. Did, and and then take advantage of the 1031 exchange. You know, uh, that, people back then didn't realize that. We, you know, we were growing at a 7% constant appreciation rate. And I told people, I said, why are you sitting on equity that's dead money 
if you can reinvest that and expand your real estate portfolio and take advantage of market growth. You know, but I was always at uh, with the impression a little bit different than you. You saw when interest rates went down, you capitalized on that and expanded your, you know, portfolio, which is it was a very smart thing to do because you had low interest rate payments. I always wanted to get rid of the mortgage, you know, but mm-hmm. but the key is that you had to reinvest that equity. Don't sit on it. That's crazy. We were also in different places in life. You know, I was yeah. starting a family and um, I'm a little bit younger than you. And you were kind of looking at, um, you know, eventually retiring. You certainly have it. You're just busier than ever. <laughs> so how did you, you know, become a builder? Well, you know, when I when I first start, got my real estate license, you know, obviously I, I went into mortgage, but I was a realtor for 10 years before I met you, you know, and I worked with these builders. And I love design. I, I sat on these open houses as a as a, br- a realtor, and then I became a broker. And I watched people come through the homes, and you know, I saw them complain about everything that was that, that wasn't right with the home. I finally got to a point of saying, "Hey, have you found that perfect home yet?" And they'd always go, "No." And they said, "Well, what is your perfect home?" And they'd write it all out, right? So the hallways were too narrow. The bedrooms were big enough, you know, for a desk and a bed, and they never had enough uh, storage and, and, you know, for their food locker or pantry. You know, I just, I heard all these complaints in the kitchens, never had enough cabinetry, and they couldn't reach the cabinets. And and, uh, so finally, clients were coming to me as a broker, and they just said, Gary, um, you know, what do you think? Should I build or should I buy? And then they would give me their needs list, Kathy. And and I said, look, there's no home out there that's going to meet your perfect home. Why don't we build it? And at that time, you can buy lots. We were picking mm. up lots for $100,000, $150,000. Yeah, you could buy land for land. Really yeah, cheap. Remember back then? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, my God. So I would, they would spend four, five, six dollars $600,000 to build these homes, and I would help them. I went out and got the architect, the designer, and I worked with them to give them their dream home, you know. And I built, uh, I think, three homes for them in Sanders Ranch and then two more in Round Hill Estates North and Alamo, you know. And those homes turned into two, three million dollar homes. And I saw that. And I said, why don't I build them for me? <laughs> so that's that's what got into my heart. Why don't I do that for me? Why am I doing it for other people? And you know, and I let all those years go by. And then finally Louiva just said to me, she said, Honey, you are so talented with all that experience you have. You know the functionality of a floor plan, you know the exterior designs that are gonna sell. What are you doing? Why are you building mortgage companies, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> that was our talk and our time where I think God intervened and just said, hey, I gave you this gift and I gave you the talent. You're a great designer. Go out there and build some homes. So you know what? I took a course, um, Fortune Builders. I think you know that. Oh, Fortune Builders yeah, is wonderful. Yeah, I, went, I went through that for two years. Flew but I didn't know they taught how to build houses. Oh, my God, yeah. You know, basically hmm. they're they're flipped. And yeah, flipped. Systems. Mm-hmm. And that's what started me to have control over costs. The systems was very, very important to me. And the other element that was important to me is 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 the um, comparable market analysis. If you don't have control over that market and pricing and where it's going to go, you can you can just get killed. But if you have an idea that you know you're in a neighborhood that's you could sell, like we go into a two and a half three million dollar neighborhood on the peninsula, and we can build a four or five million dollar home there, and people were that didn't mean anything, and we could pick these homes up for a million and a half to two million and just demo them, take them down to the lot and build them back. I sold one home. Uh, I I paid um, $2 million for it. I tore it all down, rebuilt it for 800000 I put it on the market for 4.5, and I had multiple offers on it and sold it for 4.8. And the proceeds, I think I gave, I showed you the net sheet, remember? The proceeds on that one home was over $2 million. Yeah, that's that one home. That's amazing. To me, to me that is just terrifying. So how do you how do you oh. get the money to do that? Like what? Like how do you get the financing to do a big deal like that? Well, you know the investment clubs are, are pretty big, and um, I started going to the different investment clubs, and I started talking to because I had this knowledge of both the mortgage industry and and also real estate, right? And so and and the investment wealth building knowledge. So when I would talk to these various private money investors out there, I said, look, why don't we team up, and then we would build an LLC. You know, I didn't go the, the deed of trust and the promissory note. And, you know, I, I just, I didn't. I really, I really like the partnership and building the LLC. So every partner with me would, like, they would contribute 10% interest and I would give them 
five to 10% participation in profits. They always made 20% ROI on their money. So, you know, now I was usually in and out in a year instead of two years, like most people. I was very fast getting it done. And so the investors liked the idea that they were going to get better returns with me. It was secured by real estate and ownership. And they liked the idea that I was very fast, very quick at building this, these things. So I attracted some really, not a lot. I actually, there's just a handful. There's about three or four of us that I put money into it too. I'm always putting in three, 400,000 of my, my deals. So we got together as a small group. I didn't like a lot of people because then I, there was problems for me. Mm -hmm. I could never syndicate like you. I mean, I just couldn't deal with that. But four or five of us together, putting in two, 300,000 a piece, we did very well. And that's how we raised it. And, and, uh, so today I, I don't want to put all my money into that's the biggest risk. I want to leverage. Yeah. That. And then on the other side of that, as you create that income, you go out and you buy your rental properties and your commercial buildings. That's what I do. I buy commercial. I build your profits, fourplexes, and then I build the rent them out. That's what I mm -hmm. do with it. I Amazing. Just, so, so when interest rates went up, did that affect your business? <laughs> it affected everyone's business. What what kind of question is that? I I designed the most beautiful home. I think I sent you the picture of it, you know. And um, the mistake I made, I'll be honest with everybody, is I took two and a half million dollars. I put it into this home, Kathy. And um, the home should have sold for five million. I built it in Danville, which is the top of the market, as you know. Yeah. Over in the peninsula, I could have got six, seven million dollars for it. And I went six months in that home. It was beautiful. Everybody went through and said, I love it. I love it. Oh, my God, this is a gorgeous home. It's stunning. Everybody loved it. Top of the line appliances, woof, you know, and Sub-Zero, all of that. You know, Anderson, see-through windows. They can't even see the screens. They tell you that the home was just absolutely top of the line quality. And you know what? Offers came in that they were just stupid and crazy. I just had to turn them down. Mm -hmm. And it sat on the market for six months. Ouch. And here's something I learned, too, on this. After doing all these homes that I've been building now, boy, if you don't have the right realtor, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Realtors make a big difference. I'll tell you why. Because, uh, look, when you buy it, you got to buy it right. You have to know your market. You have to put contingencies in there for inflation and if the home doesn't sell. And then at the same time, okay, you have to have the right realtor who represents the home. And here's the difference. The realtor I have now, can I mention her name? <clears throat> she's an incredible nice. realtor. Yeah. All right. Uh, Juju Shuala. She's, she's, uh, one of the, she's a top realtor in Danville and Blackhawk. She just got Ken Baring sold for $25 million on the market. It's absolutely stunning and gorgeous. So she's top of the line, works with all the ball players and football people and builders. I mean, she's just top of the line. She has a professional team. And when I hired her, she came out and she had a professional copywriter write up the home, walk through me in the home, every room, the whole concept, why design this? Why did I add an ADU to it? The income potential of the property, all, er, the versatility of the property, you know, co-generational. It was designed to sell to a co-generational. And, you know, they captured it all. God bless you. <laughs> so they, they captured it all. And I was like impressed, a professional copywriter writing up, you know, mm. the write up for the MLS and also the brochures and everything. Then she hires three photographers to come in and she did the moonlight. I mean, the sunset, you know, mm. and then she did all the other uh, photos of 3D, the walk through it, and beautiful elevation shots. And she was there on the job when she did it. So when the home, the home just came out today, by the way, and the thing about it, every other realtor says, oh, you can't sell it for over $4 million because you're only in a $2 million neighborhood. She came to me and she said, you built one of the finest qualities homes I've ever seen. She said, I don't want you dropping the price. And you know what? It, she put it on coming soon and already she's got a buyer. Wow. Amazing. I mean, so you, yeah. you, you get the right realtor. Mm -hmm. you know, and here's my advice to people. If they're out there building or flipping homes, you sh when you're designing your home, get a broker price opinion and get them in the design stages. So, cause they'll tell you everything you're making, all the mistakes you're making, mm -hmm. all the design flaws and errors. And that way you can correct it during the time of planning. Cause once you have the plans approved and engineered, then it's tough to go back and make these changes. If you made these mistakes. Yeah. So that broker could prevent all that for, for you. If you like, get a good one, get a top. Bro Remember all the people we used to train? Yeah. At Dino Funny? Oh my gosh. How many came out of there with, with that are good? You know, a few, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, it, 
you don't skimp on, on the salesperson. You know, it, you it, it's not enough that they have a pretty, pretty headshot, you know, <laughs> you need yeah. a lot more than that. Yeah, top 2%, you know, who, who cares about that? It's, it's what they can do. Is this the right value of the property? That's the main thing. Is it the right value? Can you sell it at this time with these economics? Okay. And that's, mm-hmm. that's the key right there. Once they tell you yes on that, then you can design to the market. And then you're going to have it made. So broker price opinions are more powerful than I think appraised values or appraisers are. That's yeah, no, that's really smart. And just also understanding that if you're trying to sell a home in a certain market at a certain price point, having somebody local who's had recent sales in that neighborhood at that price mm-hmm. point, they have a buyer list. You know, they've had people walk through the other houses. They, they, they. Mm-hmm. It's going to be much easier for them because they don't, they've done most of the work already. They already had that client list. Do you so remember- don't. Robert Kiyosaki told us, he told us two things, but the one thing he says, remember he said, the smartest thing you can do as an investor is build in your own hometown to, because you know the market. And mm-hmm. I remember he, he told us that, of course, you go to these places and learn the market. So it's like your own hometown, right? Because <laughs> you you're way above that. I mean, but taking that advice. And the other thing that he said that I think that uh, really changed my life, I'm sure yours, he said financial independence was nothing more than creating enough passive and residual income, which you just grasp to cover your monthly obligations. Then you can build lifestyle and invest and so forth and build their balance sheet. But he always, always pushed that leverage cash flow at us. And mine didn't yeah. sink in like yours did. I mean, to me, it was like, Oh, Robert, I want to go spend my money on a yacht. You know, I race these yachts. You know, said, you did that was a cool yacht, though. Come on. That was I, great. He, told me how he, was, <laughs> he told me that was a dumb thing to do. You know, maybe, but, you know, you had some good good memories in there. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I funny. think yeah. I think what was uh, what clicked for me is that my very first loan, when I when I got my license, came into the office, you gave me a beautiful office area to work in. Yeah, and my very first client was put... He, you know, he put all of his financial information, spread it out on the desk and looked at me and said, what should I do? And I looked at him and said, mm, one minute. And I, I, gr- I ran out, grabbed you. You came in like he wants to know what to do with his money. And here he was this multimillionaire. And that was the moment I under- I realized this guy who's super successful is asking me, who literally knew nothing, what to do. And I thought, wow, this is a real problem. People don't know what to do with their money, even if they know how to make it. They don't know how to invest it. So that that was kind of the first thing. <laughs> I mean, do you remember the size of that loan? Your first loan? It My was first $3 million. Loan, yeah. And I, I made a lot of money. You lost me a $3 million loan and just started. Yeah. And I told Louisa, which is my wife, I said, you know, this girl, is, I think she's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that was fun and I liked yeah. making the money, but then people would come to me and be buying investment property and I'd look at it and say, this makes no sense. And then after having gone to Texas and finding properties that did make sense, yeah, I just couldn't, I couldn't do these loans for people that were negative cash flow or that I knew the loan would adjust and they'd be in a bad situation. So I think it came from that place of passion of like, what are you doing? There, there was one guy who, who wanted to buy three fourplexes in Stockton for an enormous amount of money. That. And I tried to stop him and he w- he did it anyway. He lost all of his money. But I had another woman who had three properties in Stockton and I helped her sell them. And and she 1031 exchanged into nine properties in Texas. I remember sold, that. Pretty. She sold three at the peak. I was able oh. to get her into nine really yeah. nice brand new properties in Texas. And the 1031 exchange, she quintupled her cash flow. And a year later, the properties she sold were worth about 25% of their former value. So that that's what kept me going is like, wow, I can help so many people avoid disaster. I, I will not give them this crappy loan that they want. I won't do that. So they're going to buy this horrible property that's going to make them broke, but I'll show them a different way. So that's, that's really how it started. I, I, I've got to compliment you here because you know, your heart is huge and <laughs> um, you cared about people so much. And it made Thank a difference you. to me and it made a difference in everyone I know that you know. You know, most a lot of these people that really chase money that are wealthy, um, they're driven by it. They're not they don't have the compassion or the passion to help people advance and grow and be smart with their money. And that's that's what separates you. And I I, I want to tell your whole audience, man, they are blessed to have you and know you. I am. Mm. And you know, you came into my life and, and changed my life as well. So 
Um, thank you oh. for being such a good person. And helping Gary, so many thank you so much. Oh, no, that's you true. You've cry. done that for so many people. Mm. You know, a lot of your friends that invest with you, a few of them invest with me now, and they always say, oh, I had a, such a good experience with Kathy. And they were so excited. Oh, you could work with Kathy? And I says, oh, yeah. Uh, first mentor i tell him the story (laughs) oh you know i think i learned i don't know when exactly but i think it was when i was young and traveling europe and and i realized that you know something new and expensive can be really exciting at first and then it just becomes old very quickly you could buy that um I don't even know what kind of purse is fancy because I don't have one, but let's say it's a Louis Vuitton Gucci. or something like that. <laughs> Gucci, something like that. And and for a minute you feel great and you bought it and there's this rush and it gives you some kind of self-confidence. I don't know. For me, that rush was over and then what? And And so I just wasn't into material things. I don't know. I just don't care. And I also know that these things get old pretty quickly, even even with you and your yacht. I mean, although that probably never got old, but in some ways maybe it did, just the caretaking and so forth. <laughs> I don't know. But I I just realized that what is lasting is is what the difference you make in people's lives. That's that's what matters. That's what sticks. You, you, you know, you, you can't you kind of feel good about it, you know, when you go and like I'm 78 years old now, right? And so I know I don't look at no, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> but but you know, you, you, there's certain things you do in life. I mean, you're one of the prized things in my life that I'll always remember and always cherish that I helped you get started in something. I mean, you would have done it anyway. You it would, God gave you those gifts and talents, right? So you always had them. It's just a matter of you flourishing them, you know. But yeah, uh, I've helped a lot of people, yeah, build some wealth, gain some wealth and manage their monies and so forth, you know. But um, making a lot of money for me never had an enjoyment or fulfillment. Do you know I give half that money away? I, get I believe charity. it. I write big checks to these charities for kids. And, yeah, you know, that's what that's what feels I, I good. Don't, I, I'm not. Uh, yeah. I don't have a big home. I build these beautiful homes. With Louis says, "When are you going to build me one?" They said, "Honey, we we'll model the little one we have." So Aww, like, like, give her a nice home. Come I, I, on, Gary. Her, her wolf range. She's got to have that wolf range. So I'm, I told her, I said, look, we'll add about, look, we live in a 2,500 square foot home. That's big enough for the two of us. It, it is big enough. You know, I'm happy with my KitchenAid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so give me, give me that. I, I think you're right. We enjoy helping people more than anything else. And that passion of helping people get on their feet and so forth. Um, means more to us than any anything else you know we love the lord we love our country and we're just patriotic old time people you know we say grace in our mills and we're just that way we're just and like you're that. clearly we, a 49ers fan <laughs> and we're a 49ers fan and we're not ashamed of it you know i don't think we're crazy <laughs> out there, but we're just not ashamed of it and yeah we, we enjoy what we do and we feel good about it when we go to bed at night you know and here's, oh, the, here's, here's the here's the best thing we've been married 39 years now right do you know that we and i never had an argument Amazing. Never had an argument. That's incredible. I That's just, rare. I respect her. I, I respect the fact that uh, she's a strong woman. She's very smart. She knows what's going on in the world. You know, she constantly tells me what's going on in the world if I don't catch all the newscasts, you know, and she's always been there to support us in everything that we do. She never came against us. She said, oh, you can do it, Gary. You can do it. Okay, go ahead and do it. Don't be worried about it. You know, you worry too much. Mm. Just do it. You know, she had more faith than I did when I when we put our money in these big homes and she says, Oh no, it's going to work. It's going to work. You'll see. Oh, that's and beautiful. I, you, know, you, you and Rich have that though. I, I saw you rich. Like he really supported you and got behind you. And he was your biggest cheerleader. And he was a, he was a good role model for me too. You know, Rich, yeah. Rich really was a good role model. He was always your man. He was always there. And, uh, it was amazing. always there. He was officially my chief support guy. He yep. Was. He, and he was <laughs> yep. smart. Besides good looking. <laughs> yeah, all the, all the things. He was all smart. Guy. Very lucky. We're, we're, oh, Gary, well, it's been such a pleasure to have you yeah. here on The Real Well Show and Thank let the you. world know who yeah. you are and how you helped me and so many others um, really discover uh, the, the, the secrets of wealth building and beyond that, the secrets of really truly finding real wealth in life. Well, you come and visit me when you come to Danville. Please don't come to town and leave without me knowing about it. 
Sounds good. Okay. okay. Thanks, thank you. Have thank a- you for joining me here on The Real Well Show. And thank you all for joining me here. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can go to realwellshow.com to find out more about Gary, how to contact him if you want to find out about his luxurious homes or have him build you one or invest with him. And thank you again for joining me here on The Real Well Show. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.